Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for this special event. Uh, my name is Michael Brymore. I am Chief Executive of Break Foundation. For those who don't know, Break Foundation was founded in 2014 by Lauren Lafave after a son, Break Bettner, was groomed and then murdered by someone he met online. Since then, the organization has worked tirelessly to make sure that what happened to Break does not happen to anyone else. So I'm delighted to say that we have, as part of that, we have been working on a new strategy to help us to position ourselves to be there for young people, their parents, and a wider community around the issue of online safety. So I am delighted to say that we'll be sharing that strategy with you today and many other things, and I hope you will enjoy this event. So with that, I will hand you over now to my colleague, our Head of Education and Partnerships, Sarah Smith. Hello, good afternoon everyone. It is lovely um, to be here to be able to share everything that we're doing with you today. Um, we've been working really hard in 2022 to um, really um, consolidate all the work that we've been doing since 2014. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick overview of what's happening over the next hour um, and hopefully get you excited about, about what we're going to be talking about, what we're going to be experiencing today. Um, and then we will get the event underway with uh, a Q&A with Lauren Lefebvre, Breck's mum. Now that is going to be happening in about five minutes time. So if you have any questions for Lauren, um, please do put them in the chat on whatever platform you're on. So we're on Facebook Live, we're on YouTube and we're also um, on our webinar um, through Eventbrite. So if you have questions and you haven't been able to get them into us ahead of time, we've had a few um, ahead, but if you have more, please do pop them in now um, while I'm doing the um, overview of today. So we're going to be um, launching our strategy today, um, which is our five year plan um, for um, our vision of where we want to be um, over the next five years. We're going to be launching our brand new website. Now, if you have happened to have been to our website today, you will have unfortunately have seen that it's got a holding page. Um, while we get ready to um, switch all the lights on and it gets all exciting and lights flashing and everyone, uh, you know, goes woohoo um, because we can't have both websites at the same time. So that is going to be happening um, in a little while, um, launching the new website and we will have a competition um, tied in with that. Um, and with that competition, you can win a free talk for your school or community uh, from the Breck Foundation. So it's a really great prize there. Um, but you've got to stay on the call, uh, stay on the webinar and the Facebook Live to know when it's time to um, join in on that competition. 
um, and we're also going to be launching our new membership scheme, our friends scheme. So we've got two sides of the scheme. We've got a scheme for, um, for um, normal membership, um, for our supporters who've always been brilliant and, and donated regularly to us. So now we have a formal membership scheme for them and we also have a corporate membership scheme as well. Um, so it's, it's really brilliant. Um, it's a really um, exciting time for us at Breck Foundation. Um, and uh, we are also going to be doing um, a very exciting hunt um, on our new website. So um, we're going to be um, looking for um, a logo that was designed for us uh, on Safer Internet Day last year. So we had a competition for children to design an online superhero. Um, and the winning entry was uh, a brilliant little design called Padlock. Um, which is sort of like the internet safety padlock that you see on the URL when you're on a, a website on the address bar. And Charlie Robertson um, created us a fantastic uh, little design um, that was in the age four to seven category. And one part of the winning prize was that that would be used um, in future in our in our various on our websites and in our presentations. So you will be hunting for Padlock later on today um, to find out where he is on our new website. So we hope you'll all head over there when it's launched, it's not live yet, um, and look for Padlock and the uh, person who finds Padlock first and sends us a link um, in the chat uh, will win a talk for their school or their community. Um, okay. I am going to now, um, I don't know if we've had any more questions coming in at all, um, but um, I am going to uh, introduce you to uh, Lauren. Um, Lauren is Breck's mum. Many of you watching today will have seen Lauren speak before. Um, she has uh, worked tirelessly since uh, 2014 when she tragically lost Breck um, to make raise awareness of um, the situations that our children encounter online and to make sure that the tragedy that happened to her family never happens um, to anyone else. Um, so I would like to welcome Lauren uh, to us today. Hi, Lauren. Hello, uh, everyone. Hi there. Um, OK, so we've had a few questions coming in over the last week or so since we've been advertising. So um, I am going to um, start off with the very first one, which makes a lot of sense to ask. start with this one. Um, what was it that made you want to start the Breck Foundation, Lauren? Well, um, it's never something that I uh, grew up wanting to do is start a business or a charity. The reason I you know, started the Breck Foundation along with our original volunteers was because I felt like I had to. Um, after my son Breck was groomed um, and I had tried to do everything that I knew how to do at that time, uh, contacting two different schools, teachers, um, support staff, um, speaking with school nurses, school librarians, two different vicars and parents and police. And yet I couldn't get any good advice on what to do when I was concerned that my son was being groomed. I think people didn't recognize that boys could be groomed too. Uh, people didn't see him as being uh, vulnerable because he was an everyday schoolboy who had friends, who had confidence, who was kind of handsome in my opinion. Uh, he was never a problem within his you know, school setting. So no one believed that you know, he was the kind of kid that could fall for something like that. And so that's why uh, as that sort of police investigation unfolded, I realized that there were a lot of people that had they sat in a session like today, had they had um, Breck Foundation come into their school or their workplace, or um, you know, even read about what we do that between all of us, between you know me and Breck's friends and Breck's teachers and the police, we could have saved his life. And you know, with a, for a boy who has so much potential and all of our children, we want to protect. I think it's worth learning more about grooming and relationships that young people might encounter and engage with online. And that's why um, I started the charity. And I'm so pleased that we've just grown and be able to have a voice and be able to educate and empower young people. And that's, um, you know, that's, that's our mission. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. And I think on behalf of all of us, you know, it's an incredibly powerful thing that, that you did. And um, I certainly am very excited to be part of it as well. Um, we love having you, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Lauren. Okay, it's not allowed to be a love in. Okay. Um, how much do you think parents should police what their children are doing online? So this is another question that came in. I mean, this is a, I think this is a really difficult question, actually. 
Um, Cause I think, I mean, I'm a parent too. So I think, you know, it, it's different at different ages, isn't it? It's, it's just, it's hard. What would you say? What would your advice be? I think, you know, a question like this, when you think about every family, you know, is different and raises their children differently. It really, you know, it does depend on the on the age, but but what's so important is to get the education in from a young age. So just like a sex education type lesson, these real life lessons, we don't teach children about that after they've already engaged in sexual activity or conversations. We want to teach them before, um, you know, they they are approached in that way. It's the same with online safety. Sadly, we do have to teach our children about online safety much earlier than we would have thought because we are putting devices into our children's hands. They are engaging um, well, sometimes starting out with friends from school like Breck did, and then Breck was introduced to the predator through friends from school where it felt like a safe environment. So in terms of sort of monitoring and policing, um, if I could do things differently, I, I would from a young age um, make sure that I had all of my children's um, either either their passwords or access um, when they are in primary school so that I could have an eye on everything that they're doing. Um, I think what's really important is if you decide to do something like that, either through software or through sharing of passwords or however you choose to, to monitor that, it's important that it's not a secret that we're doing. We're not secretly yeah. stalking yeah, yeah, yeah. our children. Yeah. We want to be open with them and say, you know, I'm not going to come and play, you know, on your games or socialize with your friends every day. But if I feel I need to, or if I'm a little bit concerned, I want to be able to have access. And that's in a way, I feel a good beginning within primary. But as they get older, of course, they're going to want more independence. And I think that's where it gets more difficult. Um, I trusted uh, actually that Breck um, would make good decisions about who he engaged with online. I did not recognize the uh, really negative and dangerous power of predators. Even though I was aware of this predator, I didn't understand the full picture of how grooming can involve you know, the manipulation, the control, the isolation. And I saw it happening and I reported that it was happening, but it goes even much deeper than I recognized. So I think you know, one of the most important things is try to have contact with your children's friends parents. And I know sometimes that's difficult. I feel like I, you know, in a way, one of the main reasons I lost Breck was that I couldn't actually access other parents and have conversations about what we knew, what we were concerned about, what we saw and what we heard. Yeah. And a lot of that is, you know, oh, you, you know, everyone has to keep private, but actually it's important to try to get to know what the rules are with the other children that your children are playing with so that you actually have a handle of what's going on outside of your your house and outside of your children's online world and yeah, not just absolutely. you know isolated in your own i think and i think that really ties into our strategy as well doesn't it about having a whole a whole community approach with online safety it's not just about you know talking to parents or talking to young people it's about making sure that everyone is a stakeholder in in young persons online safety because you That's never know nice. who's going to notice uh, something slightly off or something not quite right and then actually you know have the courage to stand up and say something about it um, and yeah absolutely so that community approach and that that sort of is very much part of what we've been working on um, in our new strategy as well thank you um, another question here we have that's come in have you ever taken Breck's story to the USA do you think it has worldwide relevance um, it, you know, the um, the story and the lessons uh, absolutely have worldwide uh, worldwide relevance because it is the world wide web and you know some predators who can get our children to do um, you know engage in abusive harmful sexual activity you know maybe in other countries um, we most we most definitely have done a lot of work in in the states um, partly because I grew up there um, so it resonated with people who you know, sort of recognized things that I was saying, but we have done work with NICMAC, which is uh, the Center for Missing Children. We've done conferences. Uh, we've done a lot of documentaries there that's, that sometimes have trickled here as well because of the World Wide Web. And so, yeah, definitely a worldwide issue. And, and as Sarah said, community, it's important that we all work together on this. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, that's the key thing with the internet is there's there's no barriers really, are there? It doesn't matter where you are, um, you know, in the world. You can still do a lot of um, harm if, if predators and groomers, um, you know, there are there are they are working all over the world. So that's why um, it would be brilliant for us to reach even more people. Um, let me go on to the next question. I can see there's a couple of questions coming into the chat, so I'll go to them in a second. Um, I'll carry on with our uh, our sort of questions that we had lined up. Um, my children are young. They have just started playing online. What's your one big piece of advice for navigating this as a parent? Uh, for me, I think it's it's really talking to them about what they're doing, who they're engaging with, being aware of who they're talking with and who they're engaging with and who is being allowed in uh, from their friendship groups. Um, but also um, the education using real life stories, you know, not just Brex, but other children's stories to talk about things that can happen. It's difficult because in general, most children will say, oh yeah, that'll never happen to me. That'll never happen to me. And the way that we approach this is to remind them that it's not just that we're concerned about them. Of course, our kids are most important to us. But when I went to other parents and to school, I didn't want just Breck to be safe. I wanted his whole friendship group and his whole community to be safe from this predator. So I think if we can teach our young people that actually take the lessons in, even if you don't think that you'll need them, because someday you might need them for your friendship groups, you might need them for your siblings, you might need you know, to, to report something, even if you happen to be babysitting as a teenager and you see something that those young kids are doing that you're looking after. So we try to explain, it's not just a lesson for you from when you're 11 until 14 years old, it, it is a life lesson that you could use you know, if you go into teaching or policing or become a parent yourself. So we try to engage them in that way. And it's not meant to sound like a lecture, uh, because that's exactly what kids won't listen to. And in fact, Breck had had an online safety course along with his friends uh, the month before he was killed. And they didn't talk about grooming. They didn't say the word, you know, sexual, uh, you know, abuse. They didn't talk about any of the, um, you know, violent content and horrible things that our children can access. They were sort of just giving them an overview and it wasn't resonating because they had already progressed past that. They were quite techy. They knew they weren't really supposed to give out their information and details, but they were gaming and you know, playing with people that they thought they knew. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I would echo all that. I think one thing I would add as, as someone who enjoys gaming herself, um, if your children have just started gaming, one of the most powerful things you can do as a parent is play with them. So sit down and spend yeah. some time doing what they enjoy online. Because I know as a parent, I am very prone to nagging uh, my children about how much screen time they're having and why, it, particularly things like watching you, video, people playing games on YouTube rather than playing the game yourself, which is the thing they all love doing nowadays, but it's quite befuddling to the rest of us. And so I think if your kids are starting gaming and they enjoy gaming, play with them. Because that way, not only will you get an understanding of what the gaming is all about and where any um, potential contact might be happening within the different games. So um, obviously when we're playing games online, there are, um, there are chances for people to chat and, and start connecting with each other. So you'll understand those mechanisms. But also it builds a really positive relationship with your child um, that they start to think, oh, you know, mum or dad really appreciates or understands what I'm doing here. And, and so they will have more of a... Um, a positive feeling towards you so if something does go wrong they're more likely to come and talk to you whereas if they constantly feel like they're being monitored or harangued or or sort of um, you know time stamped um, then they might not um, they might not speak up at all or they might talk to someone else or talk to a friend rather than come to you. I think that's such a good point Sarah because one of the ways that the predator used to sort of put a wedge between Breck and myself was the fact that technology wasn't my forte, that, that I wasn't a gamer, that I yeah. didn't understand their life. And the thing was, is I loved hearing Breck laugh and get excited in his room. I mean, I had no problems with him gaming with people who are safe, um, but a predator turned that around and made me into be the bad guy. So by being there and enjoying, you know, you, you're showing your young people that actually you aren't that bad guy that you get it. You, you understand there is fun. It's hard though. Yeah. I have so many parents that come to us and say they do 
are concerned because of the extended amounts of time that their young people want to spend online and game. And again, that you know we have to do our best to not nag as the parent and be the bad guy. And it's really hard when you're working against someone who wants them online 24 yeah. seven so that they can Absolutely. access our children. You know, that, that, that online offline balance is something that we all have to come to terms with and figure out. And that's something I think is never too early to start. Um, engaging kids in in helping to decide for themselves you know have i spent too much time online today should i do something else it's it's quite an important um i think skill to have from an early age that we didn't need when we were growing up and, yes. and our kids really do um okay i'm going to get to one that's come in from facebook um so this is from a foster carer um i'm a foster carer and attended a talk by you at one of our centers Brilliant, thank you very much. Uh, the question I would like to ask is, are you still going to foster care agencies to do talks, bearing in mind children in care are often the ones who are vulnerable and chosen uh, by these sick individuals? Okay, so that's our question. For you know, that is a really good question because when I have worked with foster carers, there are often times I feel like I'm talking about victim personalities as well as predatory personalities because there could be you know children in in care who are uh, possibly preying on other children as well so sometimes i saw foster cares and, and even you know parents need to look at that with both hats thinking you know am i looking at what you know the people in my home are doing online and how they're relating so i fully believe it's one of the most important places that we can um, visit and educate and we have tried and passed to work on some collaborations um, we welcome any sort of uh, way to help to get in with um, with groups to be able to give sort of you know group foster care sessions and yeah please please afterwards contact us and, and see what we can set up but I think one of the things is is the funding and on both, you know, on both sides. So uh, the more sort of we hear about what you want and what you need when we do get funding in, we can then possibly focus more on, on those areas because I feel Absolutely. they are so important. And I'd emphasize again, that is in our new strategy, which we are launching today, um, having a more of a, uh, making sure that we reach um, young people who are in the most vulnerable sectors and most definitely those in foster care and looked after children would qualify um, as that. So that will be part of our new strategy is finding ways to make sure we can deliver to as many as possible who fall into that category. Okay, we've just got time, I think, for uh, one last question. Um, so this is one that was emailed in ahead of time. Um, what are the most common, have I asked this one, what are the most common ways people are trying to contact young people online? I haven't asked that one yet, have I? No, and I think, um, you know, when I, I thought of that, uh, I saw that question come in and I thought, you know, is that is that the places that we're thinking about, the platforms, but at the end of the day, any platform that our children use that has access to someone that we don't know in real life is a place that a child could be abused or groomed or trolled or you know um, bullied so it's important to remember that there are no specifically safe platforms even when uh, a company does have some um, uh, better moderation and better methods we still have to have the education in place before we allow our children to engage uh, on these platforms online one of the things to remember is that it's it's about building the relationship. So just like children build relationships through shared interests, uh, you know, genuine genuine relationships, predators will try to emulate and do that the same way by pre, you know pretending to be uh, interested in the same subjects, the same games, the same topics, and you know, complementing, building that relationship that might feel real to the child. And when you think about it, you know, there's a lot of adults that fall for relationships that feel real as well and make mistakes with, uh, you know, with, with people online. So it's not just sort of a children's lesson, but it's really about trying to teach them to recognize what a healthy versus an un unhealthy relationship is and to recognize if someone is asking you to do something that doesn't feel right or to take you to another platform. Predators will often try yeah. to pull you away from where you are in your friendship groups and take you somewhere where they aren't. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's really true. And I think, you know, obviously social media, we hear a lot about um, that being, a, a, and it clearly is, you know, a way that people are, are, are using um, those platforms to uh, groom children, but also, you know, through gaming as well, because 
um, you know, with gaming, you're kind of con you're concentrating on something else. So the people that you're talking to, you're not necessarily you haven't necessarily got safety first and foremost in your head. So accidental slipping of personal information uh, can happen quite easily. Um, so I think that's something uh, that we should all be aware of as, as parents and, and well, non-parents as well. You know, everyone concerned with online safety. Um, but the the common ways definitely are. Are through sort of um, uh, social media sites, um, county lines grooming because we haven't really gone into this, but there's so many different types of grooming. But huge amount of county lines grooming, um, which is the drugs gangs, goes on through um, social media. Um, the vast majority, and of course, since lockdown and the pandemic, you know that they were all locked down as well. So that the, we know that there's been a huge rise in grooming. Um, since the, the lockdown and the pandemic as well. well yeah. and it gave predators be... more time working from home to prey yeah. on children as well. And, yes. and our children were spending more time online. So yes. I think I think that they've also lost some of their face-to-face uh, -face socialization skills over the time that they were not able yeah. to interact with you know, school online as well. And, and so sometimes children feel more comfortable with friend, friends online because it's it's less daunting and it's just it's really important to to be aware of all those sort of you know mental and psychological issues as well yeah absolutely and again i'm going to be very, really boring about this all the time but that that's in our new strategy as well right lauren i'm really um so thankful to you today for coming along and uh, answering these questions it's brilliant i'm sure everyone watching has been really um really keen to hear what you have to say um please stay with us because we will be uh, having a little panel discussion uh, later on um but for now i am going to introduce um our very special um celebrity supporter so um charlie brooks um i'm sure you all know janine from eastenders um a terrifying character charlie herself i would like to emphasize is absolutely delightful and she has been a long time supporter of breck foundation um, she is um, fantastic. She has helped us um, several times over the last few years and she has come up trumps again. She's recorded a video for us. Now those of you who watch EastEnders will know um, she's in some pretty big storylines at the moment and she also of course announced this week that she is moving on from EastEnders but she still found time um, in her schedule this week to record a message for us um, to introduce our very exciting new friends program. So that's what we're gonna have now. Um, thank you very much, stay with us. Hi, my name is Charlie Brooks and I am here to tell you a little bit about the Breck Foundation. So today the Breck Foundation is excited to launch their new Breck Foundation Friends program. It's a self-funded charity and all their amazing regular donators and supporters make the work that they do possible. Without them, we would not be able to keep reaching children and telling Breck's story. We need to make sure that we keep educating and empowering children safely online. Never ever has it been more important. Moving forward, the goal as a charity is to reach all children, irrespective of their backgrounds. This means that they must be able to offer their services free of charge to those communities and schools that don't have the resources to pay for it. Um, to do this, we need your help, please. Uh, you can help us by signing up to the Breck Foundation Friends today, Breck Foundation Friends today. <laughs> um, you can choose to donate either three pounds, five pounds, ten pounds a month to Breck, or anything that you can spare. Because obviously we are in very uncertain times, so every little bit helps. Um, becoming a Breck Foundation BFF, as we like to call it, a Breck, is not a one-way street. So as their BFF, we will, or you will, get their newsletters and new research reports before anyone else, be the first person to hear about Breck Foundation's events, conferences, jobs or fundraising opportunities and get invited to the BFF cocktail parties. Um, they have a reception, there'll be a reception at the next Breck Foundation AGM. Ah, you care about this charity, you're here today. So why not be their BFF? Um, if you sign up, 
but you can, you can sign up by going to their website and clicking on becoming a Breck Foundation friend today or or you can use the new link that's just gone into the chat on whatever platform that you're watching this from. They can't wait to have you on board. Neither can I. And I want to say thank you um, because this is such an important charity. Uh, with everyone working together and supporting the Breck Foundation, there is no telling all the amazing things that they will be able to accomplish with your help. So please sign up, become a BFF. This is a wonderful charity. And um, never, ever has it been more important to keep our kids safe online. Thank you. Wonderful. Isn't she lovely? Charlie Brooks, not a little bit at all like Janine. I think it's fantastic. Um, so what I want to say is the, um, the link should be going, as Charlie mentioned, the link should be going into um, the chats on all the different platforms that you might be watching this on. The first 10 people to sign up today are going to win a mystery gift. Woo! We should have a mystery gift noise, actually, but I'm afraid we don't. You just have to go with my woos. Um, so they'll win a mystery gift. Um, but, you know, just do it anyway, because it's, it's really, it's such an important time for us to raise more money so that we can go into more schools and con contact more and more young people. Um, so hopefully you'll see those URLs there. You can click those links and join in. Um, as I mentioned, that's our it, that's our Enthuse website, um, our actual website. We haven't quite launched that yet, but that will be happening um, in the next few minutes. Um, so while you are um, all busy signing up to be our new BFFs, um, we're going to have a little video um, break, a couple of minutes, get yourself a cup of tea, but do come back because afterwards... Um, we're going to have our panel with Lauren Lefebvre and Michael Brymore and we're going to be doing a little bit of interaction with you all, a little bit of um, a quiz um, to see um, what we're all thinking about online safety. Okay, see you in a couple of minutes. but hopefully you've all been able to have a cup of quick, quick glass of water or something. Um, so that video you've just seen highlights really our journey since 2014, uh, what we've been doing, where we've come from, the amount of people that we've reached. We're going to reach so many more um, over the next five years. We have a really strong direction now. Um, we're co concentrating on the most vulnerable communities, the most vulnerable children, um, and we have our strategy which will help us um, 
connect to them. So um, strategy is what we're going to be looking at next, but it's a hefty tome, our strategy. You can download it from our website later on, uh, but we thought rather than uh, go through it in great detail here, we're going to um, have a quiz and a panel um, to highlight some of the areas that uh, our strategy is focusing on. Um, because that is more of a, a sort of an interesting way to bring up the topics that have led us to uh, create the direction that we've chosen. So um, I'd like to um, welcome back uh, Michael and Lauren. And or are we doing the poll first? Sorry, I can't remember which order we're doing this in now. Um, we're going to launch a quiz. Yeah, we're not going to we're going to do our quiz. Should we do the quiz first? And then uh, can you tell we haven't rehearsed this bit? <laughs> Okay, I think we're, uh, Michael, thank you for joining me. Look, there, there I was, I was dying there. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so Michael uh, Brymore, and it's the poll, yes. Um, so we want to do the poll. I'm thinking that this is going to be launched. Um, can we start with the first question? Um, ah, brilliant, okay. Our, our fantastic grace behind the scenes is, is pushing all the buttons. So here we go. Hopefully you should be able to see this. Um, so this is a poll. Um, your teenager has been chatting to a stranger on Instagram. They're becoming obsessed and they want to meet up in person. They insist they'll be safe and they can handle it. What do you do? Now this is a multiple choice. I believe that you can choose more than one, which is absolutely fine. Um, so, um, and I'm, so that I'm going to read out the answers. So take away their technology involve the authorities, be positive with them and keep them talking to you, tell your child what they're doing is wrong, hold a family intervention so everyone can support them. Um, so please, if you're able to, if you're on the call now, please can you uh, vote in our poll um, and we will then have a chat about those different possible answers. I'm not sure if I'm going to see that poll while it's, while it's being... Um, <laughs> while it's being uh, actually live so I can just see the question so um, I mean this is this is the sort of question that we get sent into us on a fairly regular basis um, the, the kind of and it kind of ties in with what we were talking about earlier Lauren you know the idea that our teens are um, connecting in a world that is kind of alien to us as teenagers we didn't have this um, this way of being on social media um, and it's a very strong pull, that idea that you've met someone, particularly if there's a romantic inclination there. Um, and how do we handle this? What's the best way um, to uh, sort of tread carefully here so that our teens continue to listen to us? Is the poll finished yet, Grace? OK. <laughs> OK, results coming now. OK, there we go. Lovely. I'm hoping everyone can see the poll. I know we can on the webinar. I'm hoping we can on Facebook and YouTube as well. I'm so um, glad no one picked the first option because, uh, well, anyone who's listened to my story will know that I took away technology and it backfired. And it was only a week that I had taken away the technology, but it backfired because it went, it pushed everything underground and made me, as I was talking about earlier, the bad guy. So yeah, thank you for that, everyone. Yeah, really good uh, point, actually, you know, and this is, and Lauren, it, it has to be said, you know, you took it away on the advice uh, that you of the police as well so um it wasn't yeah. just that, that, that you kind of acted unilaterally yeah. there this was you had no. sought advice to try and work out what to do and, and it was only a week but it was a week where we discussed the issues we just had a cool down period we talked about things and then agreed on sort of you know new plan going forward that that this predator wouldn't be in their life so it, yeah i didn't just take it away to be a you know a biatch i actually was Try, I was okay. talking to Breck throughout as well, but it absolutely it was it, on the advice of police and it backfired. I think it's really interesting because it is a, it's a knee jerk reaction, um, isn't it? I mean, Michael, I know you have uh, uh, young children as well, and, and often it can be that knee jerk reaction of parents that we will just keep them safe by or punish them by taking away that tech. But, you know, it's not the sort of thing that's that's necessarily going to work well with our young people nowadays, is it? No, no, it's not at all. And um, it's interesting that 20% um, of people said they would involve the authorities. 
and involving the authorities, another thing that um, Lauren did and that led to taking away the tech. So um, I think it's very important to note that in our strategy, that's why we're focusing on not just, as you said previously, the, the concept of um, educating a whole community, taking a whole community approach, meaning that police and others in the, in the authority are key to you know um, that empowerment that we try to do. So that's really important because if they knew, if they were empowered, that advice given to Lauren at the time would not have been given. And this, you know, some of that, uh, I, the things that happened in that story will, will probably have played out differently. Yeah, the police yourselves me. So yeah, that ties into our, our fact that we, we do offer training to police and we work with police forces regularly to ensure that their understanding of how grooming works is up to date. So yeah, absolutely. I think um, I just, you know, on, on the involve the authorities and, you know, I think the thing is, is with the question, we didn't know if there was anything extremely worrying. If, and I'm sure as all of you there know, if there were any, you know, images uh, in, you know, indecent images, or the, your, you know, your child was being asked to share something like that, or it was really inappropriate content, then, yeah, I think more of us would have said involve the authorities. I think here in this, you know, in this example, um, it could actually just be, you know, a, a friend that there's there's a their age, but definitely we would want to involve the authorities if there was anything more concerning um, and keeping in mind uh, from my instance that they didn't take note and didn't believe me so you know we've with our police training I've met thousands of amazing police people but things can slip through the cracks and sadly for Breck they did and in, in his case wasn't investigated because they didn't recognize grooming themselves. So if you do feel that you need to involve the authorities, keep in mind that you might need to push that case through. Um, I mean, I have the incident with um, my daughter who was harassed by someone claiming to be the predator from jail, harassed by someone claiming to be Breck himself. These things are taking years to investigate and, and it's it's, it's really, you know, one of the things that I wish we could help change because it just puts that child in a, a stagnant, so they can't move forward from the, you know, the harassment that they've had because they're waiting for the investigation to finish. So um, I think we have to give as much information to the police as we can when we find that there's an issue or worrying content or worrying messages, but then we need to follow up and readdress. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing to highlight as well is on our new website, which will be launched very soon, um, we do have a signposting page which will um, help you to find the relevant place to go to. Uh, we're not a counselling service ourselves, but we can help you. Um, we can guide you towards our partners at CEOP, for example, um, who deal with um, if you suspect that there's some kind of child sexual exploitation or abuse going on online, CEOP are the people to contact and they will act very quickly um, to get someone to help you there. That's CEOP.police.uk. Um, yeah, Michael, what else do you think about the answers yeah. to these questions here? I was I was looking at 70% um, of people said they were going to hold a family intervention so everyone can support them. And I think that is really key. Um, in this case, I'll be passing the question to Lauren because I'm, I'm Lauren, you know, and family held an intervention. And, you know, how did it pan out? And what would you suggest that other people do in that scenario? Well, I think um, a lot of people have said how brave I was to actually, you know, organize a meeting with other parents and try to be proactive. And, and that's, I, that's what I was talking about earlier too, is we do need to try to work together and, 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 and gain information and educate our children together when we can. Um, some of the parents within the group when it organized the meeting with the boys and other parents, some parents didn't want others involved because they wanted to keep their business private. Now, what I wish I had done is gone to the school instead of asking the other parents for the numbers, go to the school. And of course the school will straight away say, well, we can't give out any information on you know, other parents, but at least if you put that request in, hopefully then the other parents will be notified that you want to contact them and then you can find a way to get together. So if our intervention meeting with the boys had been a bigger group, I feel that that would have helped. Um, but uh, some parents weren't interested in, in cooperating in that way. So I do think it was um, really helpful. That was when we actually, you know, we have the whole conversation of, of it was actually recorded. Um, so we have that whole conversation because Breck was instructed by the predator to record it on a little 
MP3 player that I had missed when I took away the technology. So when you listen to that meeting, you can hear the boys talking about that they have fun, they have a good time gaming, that they enjoy this relationship with the predator, but they're not, they're not recognizing obviously that he is a predator. They're seeing all the mentoring, the fun and the good side, that shared relationship and shared interests. And so I think um, in a better world that should have been a way to, to protect Breck. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the fact that nine out of 10 uh, people here have said, or 90% of people have said, be positive about it and keep them talking to you. I think that is, is absolutely the key. And totally we recognize that it is easier to say it than to do it. And we all know that teenagers have their own minds and they choose what they do and how they do. Um, you will be pleased to hear that on our new website we do have a useful page of resources for parents where you can find things like conversation starters um, which are really good for sitting down and starting a nice neutral conversation where you're not going to um, get your young person's back up or make them feel defensive. Um, so we would really recommend going in and having a look at that once we launch it, which is not going to happen just yet. <laughs> I'm going to move us quickly on to the next I, question. I just, have, I just had one yeah, more point ahead. on that is um, if we do have teenagers that wanted to meet up, I think for me, what I tried to do was say to Breck, I will go with you. I don't have to yeah. sit at the table. We can go to a cafe. We can go somewhere neutral. I can just be in the vicinity. And then I could have ensured that it was, you know, the person that said he was, you know, they, that they felt safe together in a, you know, in a neutral environment. So I think really that's what we, you know, obviously with younger children, uh, we never want them to go off on their own and meet someone. But even as teenagers, if they are going to meet someone, we need to really get it embedded in their head that you know, do it in a, in a very neutral, safe place because they, at some point, lots of people do meet other people online, whether it's for dating or interacting with you know, shared interests. Yeah. Now that's really important. And can I just add very quickly as well before we move on, Sarah, that um, one of our um, trustees um, has also you know, shared our experience that um, of being um, a teenager and uh, being in that kind of situation in the early years when the internet was just uh, becoming a thing. And she had made the um, good decision to meet with the person um, in front of a police station, which threw the person off and the meeting quickly ended. So uh, that is the importance of empowering young people because ultimately there's a limit to how much we can do as parents, you know, when yeah. we're not there, they need to be able to make the right decisions and um, execute the right judgment. Yeah, absolutely. It's all down to education. Okay, yeah. question number two, if we could launch that now, please, uh, Grace, that'd be fantastic. So this one uh, is a question uh, about government. We're not going to get political here at all, but what do you think the government can do or should do to protect children online and the answers again it's a multiple choice but you can pick more than one uh, nothing it's up to parents to look out for their children regulate big tech companies use ai and all new tech to check the internet for signs of grooming make digital safety and online grooming education mandatory in schools ban all uses of end-to-end -end encryption a little bit of a uh, little bit of controversial ones there right so um please do feel free to um Pop us some thoughts in the chat box as well, if you'd like to. Um, and also, please fill in the poll. We will, this is uh, the second question. There's only two questions. So this will, we'll have a quick chat about this. And then we are going to launch our website. Get very excited. Okay. Okay, I think I'll leave it up to you. So answers are coming in according to our wonderful tech person behind the scenes. Thank you, Grace. Um, yeah, while we're waiting, I'll just say the role of government is very key because ultimately there are many organizations like us doing what we do, you know, but there is a limit to how much we can do. You know, your, your children have been born every day and the work is just going to be ongoing. So changing laws, changing policy is fundamental to making uh, the Internet a safe space for children and young people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is why, you know, again, part of our strategy is to have a bigger say in policy and to advocate um, for uh, young people as well. OK, here we go. We've got the results in. Let's have a look. Regulate the big tech companies. That was a popular one. 85 percent, 69 percent agreeing with using AI and all new tech. 
100% making digital safety and online grooming education mandatory in schools. Oh, you guys, <laughs> absolutely, um, we would love that. Um, it, we know that it is, uh, obviously, it's a part of the RSE as it is now a PSHE, yeah. um, but we want it to be much more strongly mandated um, and, and make it something that is uh, that, that we can have a say in. We're, and others um, who work in this sort of safety area are the ones who are up to date, are the ones who are the experts on it. And I think that's something that um, we want to be able to share um, with schools as regularly as we possibly can. Um, only 8% going for ban all uses of end-to-end -end encryption. Well, yeah. I wonder if the question had said ban uses of children being allowed end-to-end -end encryption, if that would have had a better result, because I, I I think that is one of the things that police really, really struggle with is if they cannot get access to what a predator uh, has been saying and sending and requesting from a child. If they can't get access to that, you, you don't have a great case. And so yeah. it's, a, it's a huge problem. It's, yeah, it, it's that balance between privacy and safety. That's a key thing. And that's very, very important for um, those in authority to figure out how to you know, um, implement policies that will allow that balance to take place. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I mean, there, there is definitely a balance to be struck here. I mean, um, people's right to privacy, people's right to freedom of speech, absolutely, but also children's right to not be abused and exploited online. Absolutely. Um, in an environment that was not created for them. Um, and yeah. Pandora's box is open. They are online. They are out there. So we have to deal with the problem that exists as it exists now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's the one final thought. I mean, it's it if if the big tech companies are using end encryption so that they don't get in trouble, that's you know, it's so that they don't get uh, badgered or seen as the bad guy because it can't be accessed. I think it's yeah. just we are just letting our children down, and I think that's it is a really difficult one. Absolutely. It's, we will watch with interest how the online safety bill progresses uh, through Parliament. Um, in the coming months. Hopefully it does progress. Right. We're More moderation from... would be great as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to move away from this now and go to the very, very exciting actual launch of our website. So I'm hoping Grace is standing by to press the big red button. Um, we are going to have um, our competition launch now as well. So as I mentioned earlier, we're looking for this great uh, logo that was designed for us, this great character called Padlock. Um, I think Grace is going to put it up on the screen for us in a minute uh, to have a look. So he was uh, created by Charlie Robinson um, in the age four to seven category. He's absolutely gorgeous. Look at him there. Um, so he has all sorts of fantastic things. Uh, his Breck Foundation cape that he wears there. The, um, the little mirror that he's got attached to his belt is for showing people's true reflection, reflections. Absolutely love that idea. Um, so what you can do now, um, the website is now live. So go to breckfoundation.org um, and have a look for our Padlock mascot. It is hidden somewhere on the pages. So um, I don't know how well it's hidden. I'm hopefully it's not hidden so badly <laughs> that, that no one will ever find him. But what you have to do is go and find it. Once you find Padlock, post the URL, post a link into the chat box of whatever platform you're watching this on, and the winner will will uh, receive a free Breck Foundation talk for a school or company or community space um, of your choice. Um, so <laughs> this is the bit now. Can we have some like fun funky music? <laughs> um, so we'll wait for um, for the the winner to um, announce uh, or to put the link in the chat box. Um, so we'll give it a couple of minutes um, and then hopefully someone will find it and we'll be able to announce the winner. Um, but please do go and look at our Breck Foundation website now and have a look for our strategy if you would like to um, to have a look at um, all the different uh, areas that we're going to be working in.
Wow, that was quick. We have a winner. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. Um, let me have a look. Um, I think it is Kirsty Helliwell. Um, well done, Kirsty. That was amazing. You are our fantastic padlock detective and you win a free um, talk for your school or community. Please do um, either don't put your details in the chat box because that wouldn't be very safe. Um, but please email events at breckfoundation.org um, to claim your free prize and give us some details as well. Um, I should also say that um, anyone who signs up for our emails today, which you can do on our new website, will be entered into a prize draw. We just can't stop giving stuff away today. Um, so please do sign up for our newsletters. We won't spam you. They come once every month or so. Um, they are full of information about what we're up to um, and it's a way to keep in touch with what we're doing and whether there might be talks available in your area. Um, so absolutely well done, Kirsty. That is fantastic work. Um, and everyone else, please do keep uh, looking at the website. We've got a few minutes left um, to um, just round off uh, today's presentation. Thank you so much for being with us. I'd like to invite Michael to come back um, and just talk to you a little bit to finish off today. And thank you again for being with us. Thanks, Sarah, for a fantastic job. Thank you, thank you everyone for joining us. It is, as I'm sure you would have gathered, an exciting time at Break Foundation. We are truly excited because we know that the demand, you know, uh, for our work has increased dramatically, especially since the lockdowns, uh, the COVID-19 lockdowns. And, but so also is our determination to make sure that we rise up to the demand, increase demand to meet it. So we, want everyone that can possibly work with us, individuals, organizations, corporates, um, other charities, no matter what you do, if there is any way at all that we can work together, any way at all that you can be part of the work that we do, any way at all that you can support us, you know, follow our work, um, follow us on Facebook, on social media in general, um, we are on all the platforms, um, any way at all that you feel that we can work together, please get in touch. We'll be excited to hear from you. Thank you very much again for joining us today for this special event and the launch of our strategy. I hope you will take your time to look through, take some time to look through the strategy. Um, give us your thoughts. We want to hear it, not just about a strategy. Um, give us feedback on the website. Um, tell us how we can make this event better in the future if we're doing events like this. And we do hope to be doing more events for the future. Once again, I really want to thank you for joining us and I hope you all have a pleasant rest of the afternoon.